Hello, everyone. Aiden back again with a wonderfully short uh, and quick lesson today. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about SSH. SSH, otherwise known as Secure Shell, is a popular way of facilitating remote access as well as secure file transfer through SCP, which is, stands for Secure Copy. Most Linux systems have SSH server if, uh, enabled by default generally speaking you'll come across this protocol quite a bit it's not uncommon for the service to be enabled on routers switches iot devices why because developers lean towards linux for the most part due to cost and the open source nature of well linux itself and ssh is a lightweight option for remote management so in today's training video we are going to connect to a remote machine and we'll upload and download files from that remote machine uh, this is a very common scenario since as an administrator, you'll most likely need to uh, re access remote systems that are not in your direct vicinity, more often than not. And to be honest, let's, uh, unless you need to be physically on location, it's more efficient to remotely connect. Uh, who wants to be doing some walking around? Uh, we can do things from the comfort of your own terminal. So let's go ahead and connect to the server. And the syntax is as follows. Uh, syntax, I should say, is as follows. And let's go ahead and open a terminal, control alt -T. And for the sake of saving your eyes, guys, let me go ahead and make this a little bit larger. And that should be good. Uh, for those of you guys that did not notice, control shift the plus sign uh, to make your terminal uh, font larger. So let's go ahead and do SSH and GT user at 10, 0, 2, uh, 22 and that is basically ssh connect to 10022 using this username uh, and let's go ahead and proceed and provide the enter there and basically we just sent a message on over to that machine saying hey i want to connect with you the machine responds with oh yeah here what is your credentials and we are going to provide our credentials as follows and did i fat finger it yes i did fat finger my credentials so one more time, and there we go. We now see that we are remotely connected. Uh, you will see that here, uh, your username is different from up here. Username is NGT user as opposed to Kali at the host name Kali. Now we are username at OS boxes. Uh, OS boxes basically is, uh, well, I'll show you guys in a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's show you guys now. If you guys go to osboxes.org, over here, this is the, my favorite place to get uh, virtual machines that are essentially uh, ready to go uh, out of the box. So let's go ahead and close that out. And let's make this a little bit nicer. Uh, if you guys are looking to get a, you know, if you guys are looking to get any machines uh, or virtual machines uh, for images, uh, accept all cookies, there you go. Uh, for images here, guys, we can basically go to osboxes.org, and we have a huge selection of machines uh, that you can download. CentOS, Arch Linux, Fedora, OpenSUSE, SUSE, Debian, uh, they are all provided here for you. Let me just get a list for, of the VM images here, and let's go look for VirtualBox. And no, I don't want... There you go, the virtual box images. And as you guys can see here, there's well over 50 of these boxes available for your use. And that is osboxes.org. If you guys click one, like let's say Nitrux Linux, which I've never even used, you can basically go over here and go into info and it'll give you the login and password and essentially the image for that VDI or the virtual disk image. Uh, if you guys, yeah, you can do a quick Google search and it should be pretty obvious how to uh, import this VDI into Linux or into VirtualBox, I should say. All right, but enough of that. Let's go ahead and minimize this and let's talk more about SSH. Now, SSH, there's not really anything to say that's special about SSH. It's just a secure connection to a remote machine. Uh, so it's as if I am connected to that machine locally on the terminal. So if I issue out ls, it will give me whatever files I have in my home directory. I can tell them in my home directory because of this tilde right here. And I can just go ahead and say lsl. And notice over here, we do have quite a few, uh, we have do have quite a few files and folders. And let's just go do pwd. Looks like I have myself here. And let's do lsla just to see any hidden files. And there you go, guys. And you know, I can do if config right here. And it does show that my IP address is 1002. Essentially, all the commands that you have at, 
that you would have access to if you were locally connected as machine, you would have access through, you would have access through SSH. Now let's go ahead and type in sudo l to see what kind of permissions I am, uh, I am capable of running as this user if I do provide sudo privileges. And it looks like I am able to use all the commands, uh, inherently insecure, uh, but we'll just run with it for right now. So the scenario goes, I'm just walking around the system. I'm remotely looking around. You know, I can basically uh, look around, use the system however I want. And I do see that there is a project file, project uh, folder. So if I go CD project, and I do see LSLA, Look, looks like there is a couple files in here. I always issue out the LA command, LA uh, option here, just to look for hidden files. As you guys can see, when I put placed LS over here, I see outlog and NC OpenBSD. Uh, but when I did LSLA, there is now dash bash RC. The dot over here basically says to the system, if they're not specifically looking for it, go ahead and hide this file. All right, so what if I want to remotely download this file or remotely download this binary over here. I know this is a binary because it has X right there. So that says it's an executable. So it is a binary of some sort. So the 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 scenario is, what if I want to download auth.log bash rc or nc.openbsd to my local machine? How would I go about doing that? Well, quite simple actually, hardly an inconvenient. All right. So so you must be asking yourself, well, Aiden, that's all great. Now I know that I can, or I know how to use SCP, which is a part of the SSH suite, to copy files to from a remote machine. But what about Aiden if I needed to upload a file to a machine? So one thing that we can do here, let's just say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and transfer this picture, forest.jpg. Yeah, sure, why not? Forest.jpg over to that remote machine itself. Like, how would we go about doing that, Aiden? So, it, actually, it's quite simple. Again, barely an inconvenience. All we really need to do is essentially kind of just do it backwards, really. So, we can just say SCP. We can just say SCP, and we want to say forest.jpg. And ba essentially, what we can do is say, hey, you know what? SCP, copy to forest.jpg. Uh, over to ngt user at 10.0.2.2.2. And what we want to do is then we want to provide where we want to copy that file to. And in this case, home ngt user slash. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do it that way. Provide the credentials. And there we go. Now we go back up here to verify. And we see, we now see that there is a forest.jpg right there. If I take a look at LSLA, you guys can see that this machine or basically this image was modified at 1019. All right. Well, fantastic, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. In less than 10 minutes, everyone, you learned uh, how to use SSH and you learn how to use SCP or secure copy to upload and download files from remote machines. And that is amazing, right? 10 minutes. You know, that's that's basically the time it takes to brew a cup of coffee or to microwave a uh, frozen dinner. Actually, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to microwave a frozen dinner. 10 minutes seems a bit long, but that is one third of a Dragon Ball Z episode or your favorite sitcom. And you just learned something today. So tune in next time, guys. We'll have another quick lesson provided for us on this YouTube channel. Again, my name is Aiden, an NGT instructor, and I will see you guys next time. Jacob Hess here. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you, if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, then be sure to check out our IT engineer training programs at www.02engineer.com.